All right, so here's all the data that you collected there, Mr. Bergman. Yep, this is uh, all we, I got. Right, mm -hmm. we've got the mass of our magnesium there, uh, the mass of the HCl that we use, and our initial and final temperatures. So if we want to determine delta H for this reaction, first we need to find Q using MC, del uh, MC delta D. Right. And then we're going to divide it by the moles of our limiting reactant. Now, how do, which one of those is our limiting reactant, and how do you know? Well, I, I, as I watched the experiment occur, I saw the magnesium completely be um, consumed. So if all the magnesium got used up, then that's our limiting reactant. So we're going to take the delta H is going to be our kilojoules of the reaction, divided by the moles of magnesium in this case. So here's our, our reaction for all this. Right. We need to find the kilojoules and we need to find the moles. Mm -hmm. So to find the kilojoules, like we said, we're going to use the equation Q equals MC delta T. And for the moles, we're going to find the moles of magnesium, of magnesium because it was the one we ran out of. So right. let's do the MC delta T first. Okay. So Q would be equal to the mass. Right. The mass was, a, was 100, 100 grams. grams of HCl. Now, why HCl? Now, why not the magnesium, Mr. Sams? Uh, well, the HCl is mostly water, and again, we're measuring the temperature change of the water that mm -hmm. is uh, that all these things are dissolved in. Yeah, so it's the HCl that's doing most of the temperature right. changing. If you really wanted to be specific, it's the you water probably could say 1.6, yeah. 100.67, but yeah. it's close enough that it doesn't matter. Now, our change in temperature here is... 48.7 minus 19.1. So let's do that. 48... 0.7 minus 19.1. That's 29.6. 29.6. Save that on your calculator, Mr. Sams. Mm -hmm. So actually, my C, now you say, well, what's the C of hydrochloric acid? Since it's, well, it's mainly water, water, it'll be 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times my temperature, which was 29? 29.6. 29.6 degrees mm -hmm. Celsius. That gives me a grand total of 12,000. One, two, three, seven, three. Three, seven, three joules. Now I'm going to quickly convert that to kilojoules because mm -hmm. it makes life easier. Yeah, That'll so be 12.4 12 12 .4 kilojoules. Now let me find the moles of the magnesium. Now I had how many grams? 0. 0.67. 0. 0.67 grams. Grams of magnesium. I know there's 24.3 grams in one mole. I got that from the periodic table. Mm -hmm. So I looked on my periodic table, found that that's the answer, and I get what? A point zero two seven six. Zero point zero two seven six moles. That goes up right there. Yeah. Now then we just divide. So my delta H will be 12.4 kilojoules divided by 0 0.0276 moles. I get like 400 something, Mr. Samson. Isn't it? You get uh, 449. 449 kilojoules per mole. Now, the interesting thing is, Mr. Samson, that is the wrong answer. What? Yeah, well, your calculator just gave you that, but that's still wrong because we've done one thing, we, or one thing we've not done is we need to think about the sign of delta H. Oh, yeah. Because delta H needs to either be positive or negative. Right. Well, the temperature now, of the water went up. Yep, so the temperature went up. So, so that's an exothermic reaction? An exothermic always get a negative answer. Okay. So delta H is equal to negative 449 kilojoules per mole. Right. And actually, I think the real answer is like negative 460. So yeah, this is pretty close. Pretty close to the real answer. With a, with a styrofoam cup. Styrofoam cup. That's right. And our amazing Ness. All right, let's do a second example, Mr. Right. Sams. Okay. So here we have a different one. It's a very, very similar type problem. We have ammonium chloride dissolves. So ammonium chloride is NH4Cl. It's not that important you write this reaction, but we'll just go ahead and do it. That's a solid. And when it dissolves, it turns into ammonium ions, and we would put AQ because it's dissolving into water, which okay. is an aqueous solution, and chloride ions, AQ. Okay, what do we know? Uh, we have 2.25 grams of ammonium chloride, so we could probably get moles from that. grams of that. Yeah. Okay, we've got 100 grams of water right. and the temperature change. So we could use uh, the mass of the water. So delta H is kilojoules divided by moles. So let's do the MC delta T, t thing here. Okay. So this is MC delta T, which is, now here we'll say, should we say 102, Mr. Sams? I'd say 100. 100 grams yeah. times, it's still in water, so we can use the 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Now, I don't have to subtract the beginning and final no, temperature. No, it, it tells us what the change is. It that's drops. the delta T. That's delta T. So they didn't, we don't have to, like, subtract. They give it to us. And what do we get there, Mr. Sanders? Uh, it's 4305. 4305 joules. 4.3 kilojoules, if you want. Yeah, well, let's do that at the end then. And okay. the moles, I'll have 2.25 grams. Now, this is the ammonium chloride because that's the substance that dissolved. So it's the limiting reactant. I can say grams in one mole. I think it's like 84. 476? What is it? Um, I have absolutely no idea. I'm putting in my calculator right now. 
All right, so we're trying to find the molar Oops. mass of NH4, CL4. It is 53.5. 53.5, and then when we divide this, we get... 0 0.0421. And that's moles. So to find delta H, it'll be the kilojoules, and the kilojoules will be 4.3 kilojoules. I divided by 1,000, divided by 0 0.0421. Two one moles, and we get one hundred two one o two kilojoules, kilojoules per, mole. per mole. Now that one will be positive, Mr. Sam. Right, Sams, because it's endothermic. Because it's endothermic, because it dropped the temperature mm -hmm. ten point three degrees. All right. Okay, so it's just like the other problem, except kind of doing an endothermic example. And the last example is the trickiest one. Okay, we have a reaction. Shouldn't there be another product here? No. Nope. Okay. An extra plus heat. Oh yeah, plus um, energy. So uh, so we have a reaction with the delta H, and so I'm going to write because since it's negative, I'm going to write 851.5 kilojoules. Now, why did I not put a negative sign there, Mr. Sams? Because uh, uh, you wrote it as a product, and as a product, it's implied that it's exothermic and therefore negative. Okay, so that's the question. Now here, the chemicals are quickly dropped into a thousand grams of water. If 23.5 grams of iron is produced in the reaction, how much heat? How much will it raise the temperature of the water? Okay. So we want to see how much the temperature goes right, So we're up. solving for delta T. So delta T is the question mark, right? right? All right. So let's see if we can do that. Okay. So let's go to another screen here. Here's our reaction. And we had... 23.5? Uh, uh, yes, 23.5. 23.5 grams of iron. So I have 23.5 grams of this. Okay. And I want to convert this to energy. Right. And then I'm going to essentially solve for Q. That'll be Q that and equals Q. MC delta T. And I will then plug that in and solve for delta T. Okay. So this is like kind of a combination of the stoichiometry problem we did a while back. So I have 23.5 grams of iron over 1. And the first thing I must do is convert grams of iron to moles of iron. They are 55.8. Yep. 55.8 grams of iron. I found that on the periodic table in 1 mole of iron. The grams of iron cancel. Now I'm going to use the mole to kilojoule ratio. I'll say two moles of iron. Now I get that from the two right here in the coefficient is 851.5 kilojoules. My moles of iron cancel and I get kilojoules. 179. 179 kilojoules. That's sort of equal to Q. The problem is that's in kilojoules. Yeah, we need it in joules. Yeah, we need it in joules. So I'm going to say 1790000 joules. That's my Q, right? Is equal to mc delta t. My mass, if you recall, grams. was 1000 grams. The C is still that 4.18 4 joules per gram degrees Celsius times delta t. Now we divide both sides by 1000 and 4.18. 1000 and 4.18. And we get an answer. So we get uh, 42.8. So it's 42.8 degrees Celsius. Right, did now it that's, ask for the final temperature or did it ask it for the... It said ask for the temperature change. How much did it go up? How much will it raise the temperature? 42.8 degrees. Yep. Now, interesting question. Sometimes they might ask you the question, what is the final temperature? Right. So let's say, I don't, let's say that the initial temperature, Ti, was um, 20. 20 degrees Celsius. Since this is exothermic, energy is on the product side, we would then add the 42.8, that's a 4, uh, degrees Celsius, and you get 62.8 degrees Celsius. Okay. Or if it had been endothermic, you would have subtracted would have it, yep. which would have been a little tricky here because it would have gone below the freezing point. We'll deal with that actually <laughs> in a later podcast. Okay. I think that's it. So, ladies and gentlemen, that high math, isn't a lot of math on this one, but, well, hey, science, chemistry, math. They all go together. They go together. We'll see you in class. Bye.